is part 59 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using layout views in an MVC application. Please watch part 58 before proceeding. So what's a layout view and what is the advantage of using it? Layout views provide the advantage of maintaining consistent look and feel across all the views in an MVC application. A typical layout view consists of a website header, navigation menu, website footer and view specific content. This view specific content is what is going to change on a per view basis but most of the time website header, navigation menu and web site footer doesn't change that much on a per view basis. So rather than having all of these sections in each and every view, we can define them once in a layout view and then inherit that look and feel in all the other views. So with layout views, maintaining that consistent look and feel across all the views becomes much easier as we have only one file to update if there has to be any change. And once we change that layout file, all the views that has subscribed to that layout file will immediately reflect that change. So maintenance will become much easier. So let's see how to use this layout file in an MVC application. So here I have a blank ASP.NET MVC4 application. Now, where are we going to put this layout file? We know that layout file will be used by all the views in our application. So we need to put it in the shared folder and this shared folder is going to go into the views folder. So let's right click on the views folder and add a folder and let's name it shared. And let's add a layout file and how do we do that? Simply right click on the shared folder and add a view. So it's very similar to adding a view. In fact, the extension of the layout file is also going to be, um, you know, the same as the view.cshtml. If you are working with um, Visual Basic as the programming language, then the extension is going to be .vbhtml. Now, you can give any meaningful name to your layout file. It doesn't have to be underscore layout, okay? But I am using underscore layout, and we're going to make use of Razor View Engine. And notice that I'm not going to check any of these boxes. I'm this is not a partial view and this itself is a layout this itself is going to be a layout view so there's no point in checking this checkbox use a layout or a master page so click add this should add a layout file and notice the extension it is the same as any other view dot CSHTML okay so since this itself is going to be a layout file I'm going to get rid of that piece of code there. So look at this, I have the infrastructure HTML here, that is the HTML tag, head tag, and within that we have title, meta tag, body, uh, closing body, closing HTML. Okay, now, so we don't have to have this repeating HTML, um, you know, tag, head tag, body tag, um, title tag in each and every view. We can have it once in our layout view. Okay, now we want our layout view to have this format, a website header, navigation menu, website footer, and then some view specific content is going to go here. So I'm going to use a table to define this layout. And you know, the HTML in our layout file is going to look something like this. So we're gonna have HTML tag, you know, opening and closing tag, and then we have the head tag. We'll come back and discuss head tag in just a bit. But now let's concentrate on the body tag itself. So within the body, we're gonna have a table. And this table is going to have three TRs. So the first TR is to display the header itself, the second TR to display the navigation menu and the view specific content, and the third TR to display the footer. And notice that within the first TR, we have a TD, and we have used this call span attribute and we have set that to two. Why is that? Because in the second tier we're gonna have two rows. The first, I mean two TDs. The first TD is going to display the navigation menu, second TD is going to display the view specific content. But then in the first row and in the last row we just um, need one TD but the width of that TD has to span the width of two TDs. That's why we are setting the call span to two. And then we want the text to be aligned center. So we are setting the style attribute and then specifying text alignment of center. Okay. And then here we have, you know, uh, a text which says website header. We're going to replace that with employee portal. Okay. And then in the middle 
TR, we have two TDs. The first TD is going to display the menu and the second TD is going to display the view specific content. Now this is very important. So how does this layout file know that it has to plug in view specific content at this place? That is with the help of this function. So wherever you call this render body function, that's where you know the view specific content is going to be plugged in. So at that location. Okay, so that's very important. And then finally we have another TR and then again this TD width is going to span across the width of two TDs. That's why we have that call span attribute there. And then we want the text to be aligned center and we are going to display copyright notice here. That's why we are setting the font size to small. And at the moment we have this hardcoded text website footer, but we are going to replace that with copyright notice. Okay, so pretty straightforward HTML within the body. Okay, the important thing to remember is this call to render body. This is where the view specific content is going to be plugged in. And then another important thing is within the head section. Notice that we have title tag there. So obviously the title tag is used to specify the title for our web page. And notice that we are not hard coding the title for the web page. We are actually pulling the title out of the view bag object. And why is that? Now this layout file is going to be used by multiple views within our application. For example, by the create view, index view, edit view, etc. Now these views are going to specify what the title is going to be, not the layout file. Okay, so those respective views are going to put their title within the view bag object using this title dynamic property. Okay, and then this layout file is going to retrieve the same title out of the view bag object and then it's going to wrap that inside this title attribute, I mean title tag, which is going to be put into the DOM and then um, you know it's used by search engines for search engine optimization, etc. And then another common thing that we do is within the head we reference all our JavaScript and CSS files. At the moment in our sample application we are not going to reference any JavaScript and CSS files, but in reality we actually use them quite extensively. So all the JavaScript and CSS files that are going to be required by the application can be referenced here so that there is no need to reference them again in each and every view. Alright, so I have this exact same HTML already typed to speed things up so I'm going to copy that and then paste that into our layout file. Okay, so we have our layout file ready now. Now to use this layout file with specific views we need some views and so let's go ahead and generate them we're going to make use of this table so tbl employee so let's go ahead and add adio.net entity data model to our application so right click on the models folder add a new item and we want to add adio.net entity data model and let's name it sample data model let's add that and we want to generate our model from the database. Let's click next. And we want our connection string to be named as sample db context. Let's click next. And this is going to connect to the database, retrieve all the tables, views, and stored procedures from there. And the table is going to be TBL employee. We want our models to live in models namespace. Let's click finish. So this should add TBL employee entity, but we want our entity be to be named as employee. So let's go ahead and rename that. Save everything. Let's build our solution to make sure this employee class is compiled. And the next step is to add a controller. So right click on the controllers folder, add a controller and let's name it home controller. We're going to make use of this template which is going to generate read write actions and views using entity framework. Our model class is going to be employee and our data context class is going to be sample db context and we're going to make use of razor views. So this should add home controller and all the views basically to list employees, to edit employee, to create an employee, to delete an employee. Okay, so we have a home controller. Now let's build our solution and we have our views as well as you can see here. So build succeeded. Now let's fire up a browser and let's navigate to index action. 
At the moment, you know, when this view is rendered, you'll notice that this index view is not going to use the layout file. If it had been using the layout file, we should have had that header, footer, left side navigation, you know, all that stuff, but we don't have it. So why is this layout file, uh, I mean, index view not using the layout file? That's because we need to associate this layout file with these views. And how do we do that? Using a property called layout. Okay, and another important thing to notice here, look at this, this index.cshtml, this is the auto-generated view. And notice that, you know, the title, we are, we are storing the title of this view in the view bag object. And if you remember, in our layout file, we're actually pulling the title out of the view bag object and then putting that into the DOM, that's the document object model, for the browser to render the title. Okay, so within the index view, let's say we want our title to be something like employee list page maybe. And then we want to specify the layout file for this view. And I specify that using the layout property. Notice the property type, it is of type string. So we simply specify the path for our layout file. So where is our layout file at the moment? It's present in a folder called shade. And this shade folder is present in views, and this views fo folder is present in the root directory. So tilde character indicates the root directory of our MVC web application, forward slash, that is going to be in views, and shade, and the name of the file itself, which is underscore layout.cshtml. Let's save everything. And let's go ahead and refresh this. At this point, this index view should actually be using that layout view. Okay. Now we don't want this hard-coded text. Instead, let's have some meaningful titles there. So we want the header for our application to be employee portal. So within our layout file, I'm going to replace this website header with employee portal. And we are going to replace menu with an action link. So let's copy that. And we want to replace this menu with a call to action link helper. So the name of the link is going to be employee list. And that this action link is going to invoke index action within our home controller, which is going to display the list of employees, basically. And then we want to dis replace this website footer with a copyright notice. And notice this at the moment, the copyright notice has that symbol, um, you know, this C within a circle. If you're wondering how we get that symbol, simply hold down the control key and then press 0169. That's going to print that character for you. Okay. All right. With all these changes, let's actually save everything. And then let's refresh this view. So we should have obviously those text, um, that text appearing. Now, at the moment, if you look at this, um, you know, page, it's not that lively. Let's say, for example, we want to use some colors like this. We want an orange background color for header, footer, and this menu section, and we want basically the font color to be white. Maybe um, to achieve that, all you need to do is in your layout file, you need to make that change, and this is going to be reflected across all the views who have subscribed to this layout file. So I have a TD here. So probably here we want to set maybe a style of background color. In reality, we will actually set these style attributes in a CSS file. We'll discuss more about CSS in a later video session. So background color, I want that to orange and maybe the full color of white. Okay, let's actually copy these styles and then use them for menu and in our footer as well. Okay, let's save the changes. Look at this, the moment we refresh this, you know, the changes will be immediately reflected here. So we get the output that we expect. Now, the moment when I click on edit link, so obviously we'll navigate to the edit view. Now, we have this error, that's basically because within edit, we have a section called scripts. Let's go ahead and get rid of that section. And let's refresh this view. 
So now it should navigate to edit view and we are editing the first employee who has got this ID 1. But look at this. Is it using that layout view? No. Why is that? Because we haven't told that layout, um, that view to use that layout file. And how do we tell that? The same idea. You know, use the layout property within that edit view. So let's call this, you know, maybe the title as employee edit. Now, if we refresh this, this is going to use that same layout file. And look at the title right here, employee edit. Now, obviously, we are repeating this code, you know, layout, you know, it's the same piece of code in each and every view. Now here I have just a handful of views so I can easily update them. But let's say in our application there are 200 views. Now just imagine how much effort it's going to take um, to put this property within each and every view. And duplicating code is not at all good when we develop as, as a matter of best practice. You know, anytime we are duplicating code, we have to stop and think a way of, you know, writing that code much better. In our next video, we'll actually discuss, you know, specifying, uh, specifying our layout file in one central location so that we don't have to duplicate it on, on each and every view. Because the problem with duplication is that tomorrow, if we have to switch to using a different layout file with a different name, then we'll have to change that on each and every view. And there are two problems with that. One, it is error prone and we may not update all the views that we need to update. Okay, so in our next video, we'll discuss how to specify a layout view setting for all the views at one place. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.